So Petra, you come from Prague? Yes. Yes. And you studied at Kukum, Kukum. and Amelia Park, Architecture and Design. You are stealing words from my phone. <laughs> ah, sorry. I'll try to say it a little as least as possible. You are also a director of quality. Oh, that's, really <laughs> that's what it says on the website. At Briefcase Tank Foundry. You're a letterer, a type designer. You yes. like uh, traditional Czech calligraphy and and uh, letter forms. And you have a lifetime pursuit, <laughs> uh, writing a book, uh, oh. publishing a book sure. about uh, Jaroslav, 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 Jaroslav Benda. Jaroslav Benda, who is a, uh, uh, a Czech tech designer uh, who did editorial work, uh, packaging, design, toys, and all kinds of things. And I had never heard of him before I <laughs> looked into your work and saw the Kickstarter campaign, and it looks awesome and amazing. So, um, I don't know, has the book come out already? It came out yes. in Czech? Did yeah. it come out in English yet? It is already printed. Already available? It's already uh, sold worldwide, okay. so uh, it's almost like sold out. We got last 50 copies. Like. Okay, so you can reserve a copy for me. Yeah, I brought, <laughs> brought one copy. Okay. It's, I don't know, the mix are having their own life. Yes, <laughs> maybe it's working better. Ooh. Yes, this one. So, I hope it didn't steal too many words. No, it's perfect. Please welcome Petra. Thank you. I won't be singing, I promise. <laughs> so let's try my French. Bonsoir, Denis. Uh, je m'appelle Petra. Deutsche Kaloma, which is hard to pronounce, so just call me Petra. So, as been said, I'm a letterer, type designer, and sign painter from Prague, Czech Republic. And today I'm going to talk about scripts, cruising, and my PhD project, which is going to be super boring, but I hope you can have a nice sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, so, first of all, I've prepared a small introduction for those who have no idea who I am. Uh, I was studying for almost 10 years at the Type Design and Typography Studio uh, at Academy of Arts, Architecture and Design in Prague, shortly UMPRO. And since 2013, I'm based in the briefcase type foundry, uh, where I work together with Tomasz Brosil in the white t-shirt and with Radek Sidun uh, in the black one. You probably know Tomasz Brosil by his own type foundry called Suitcase. Briefcase and Suitcase is just the three of us. <laughs> it's confusing, I know. Uh, but Briefcase specialized mostly as an independent type foundry that produce and distribute Czech type faces by Czech authors. Some of those are not living anymore. Some of those are students who are not able to run their own type foundry. Um, briefcase is also a cover up for our multi-directional typography activities. Uh, such as the Type 9010 project. This book is an encyclopedic collection of all typefaces that were produced in Czech Republic between 1990 and 2010, after the digitization era fully started. We were curious how many designers in Czech Republic were active and how many fonts were released, mainly, and if there is something they have in common as a, like a font zoom or font garden. To know the answer, you have to see the book, or order the book, or visit us in Prague in our studio to check it out. Um, I don't have a copy with me, but you can find lots of in, uh, images on the internet, I promise. So these are just a few spreads from, from the publication. Cool. My latest book project, as was noticed, is a publication about extraordinary typographer Jaroslav Benda. This book represents a first attempt to exhaustively uh, capture his splendid typographic work that was lost and forgotten for many decades. Uh, we've managed to crowdfund an English edition on Kickstarter last year, and uh, the book is already printed and was, as has been said, shipped in um, the beginning of the spring this year. So if you are interested in a copy, just let me know after the talk. Um, yeah, I bought one copy here, so after the talk you can take a look inside. So, now let's dive directly into scripts and lettering. I'd like to show it to you my lettering process through my <coughs> school till today. This is a sketchbook that we used for the calligraphy workshop today, and this sketchbook kicked this all off. It's called Script Photoshop Windows. 
It started as a part of a simple <coughs> school assignment to create a missing publication about any typographic topic. And I choose scripts for advertising. For this notebook, I sold out and collected almost all the possible reference books. Czechoslovakia textbooks, manual, handouts, handbooks, alphabet books, sign painting plates, specimens, manuals and all journals in existence, and choose all the best script forms into this one notebook. Its primary goal was to be used as a research booklet or as an inspirational source of publications that are very rare, in decay or almost destroyed. I use this booklet within my workshop or I give it to everybody who wants to have a clear overview of one country's visual legacy. As you see, handwriting was a required course at Czechoslovakia vocational schools that train the country's future waiters, shop clerks, and most importantly, of window designers. All of these materials were published as instructional guides or alphabet handouts. Like other European countries, Czechoslovakia also has a rich history of commercial art. In the interval period, this discipline was culturally very important and was marked by high artistic quality and charm. After the war, commercial advertisement gave way to the political propaganda. Ideological slogans slowly made their way into window displays. Following the advent of digitization and the new printing technologies, this discipline completely disappeared, and now it is almost a forgotten craft. So besides window display and elegant script typefaces, a number of rather bizarre or decadent scripts did appear. But the drawing with the mouse stick and brushes was slowly and sadly replaced by filling in stencils. For highlight, these are the three of the most typical examples of Czech lettering scripts. The Pentlovka, the closest translation could be a ribbon. It is a stressed script usually written with a flat nib, with letters connected at the bottom, which makes it look like it's formed from one long length of ribbon. Next one is Švihovka, could be translated as a whip script typeface and a famous advertising manuscript it is. It is a slanted script written with the real panache and drive. The hand guiding the brush must move quickly <coughs> and flexibly. Third example is a shaded Latin drawn with a sharp pointed fan. It's an elegant handwriting style frequently used for official works such as diplomas or addresses. I also picked up a few basic manuscripts that was popular in late 60s like this one. Its simple letter forms are similar with my approach and its skeleton is very easy to learn. And because there are still a few schools that teach store window dressing in Czech Republic from the 50 year old publications with no evolution at all, I decided to breath some life into the field. And so I started to transform my favorite Czechoslovak manuscripts, playing with the letters and looking for new forms and expressions. I adapted them to my own casual handwriting for the sake of speed and fluid writing. I started by using most common felt tip pens and markers and all kind of brushes. I tried to tailor the tips to the specific type of script that I wanted to make. With felt tip pens I know I can draw a meter long stroke without any changes in weight, no matter the pressure, no missing ink or dry exits. Even though we are talking about finding inspiration in historical typefaces and sources, this is not about retrophilia and in black and big pants. I started to learn various script systems and styles <coughs> by making a caricatures of them. I was less interested in careful imitations of forms made with a mouse stick. I became much more interested in evolving new ways, shapes and style into scripts written with a quick single stroke that is modified by the energy of the creator hand. For each script, I came up with a number of alternatives for all the characters. I also looked for the best proportion between baseline and the upper and lower case letters, including swashes, capital forms, rotated italic, and so on. I also tried to move the optical center lower let the letters nicely sit on the baseline instead of a very high x height 
where the focal point is far above the optical center, which makes the letters look unbalanced. I adapted the manuscript so that they could be used as variable fonts, elastically in any way, to hide smoothly going from connected to separated characters. Once I exhausted myself with that, I started to pick out the scripts I write most legibly, quickly and instantly. <coughs> The result took the form of four new script typefaces. A narrow script written with a flat felt tip pen that works nicely in large sizes and huge contrast formats. The vertical stems are drawn with a bit of roundness, naturally to the hand shape. Second script is an italic written with a chiseled tip pen. Its over character and gentle tilt make it easy and quick to write, which gives the sign painter a lot of time to come up with the many shaped innovations. The third is a casual handwritten script designed for writing short signs. It's excellent for writing quickly within a limited area, such as inside a bubble or along an arc. Your hand just naturally carves. And the fourth is my favorite. It's a monolinear script based on a regular rhythm that allows elastic varying of the length of the sign. The result of my work was my master thesis at the Umprum in Prague in 2016, which is like hell of a go. <laughs> there was a total of four final handwritten typefaces and 18 handwritten posters with samples of various compositions and potential uses. The main goal of my work was to put these scripts back to life in a real life application, mainly. So right after finishing my master studies, I become a kind of a new sign painter who designed contemporary handwritten scripts and use them. Most sign writers in my country have been pushed away by cheap printing technology, so there is more than enough work for one person. That's how I got from digital typography directly into sign painting and retail design. On my first project, a coffee shop in Prague, I used all of my trained scripts. Unfortunately, this painting stayed up for a week because the owner sold it out and painted it over just <laughs> seven days later. <laughs> what a hit. I started to write in several different restaurants with completely different types of cuisine and visual identities. What you see now is Eska Restaurant in Michelin Guide, and its script is based on triangle red numbers for prices and a simple school cursive script for all items on the menu. Ambientes, a chain of restaurants that also have several hipster picnics or catering events, so I faster learn how to switch styles, colors, and materials, from doing a cute signboard for a baby mini festivals to graffiti influence for special occasions. Writing in heights or during the night was nothing weird for me then. My approach was to create a bespoke handwritten script that matches the existing graphic design. But in some cases, the work included not only painting a window, menu board, and a neon sign, but also to create an entire visual identity based on the digital version of original lettering, like here. Most of the time, I'm trying to stay loyal to handwritten techniques as much as I can. Here's, for example, a box ceiling and calligraphy on alcohol bottles. And the lettering just became my everyday bread and also a playground. It's always kind of new to see your letters on various medias and sizes. Like I was surprised to see the huge light boxes on a brand new gas station called Pumpa in Slovakia. Or much smaller, like here on a tattoo. Or in digital lettering. In digital lettering I tend to sketch by hand so I can build letters with a structure of a real, genuine tool. Sketching various styles just helped me draw the precise vector curves, where I can apply all my historical re-examination and the search for a valid local morphology. It created me, for me a solid foundation for the development of new type experiments, but mostly for my own script typefaces, a font which I apply the knowledge I come across when searching in old manuscripts. But still, public lettering workshops, new fonts, my entire work as a sang, uh, single letterer and sign painter is nothing to compare with the overall terrifying level of signs 
that I came across every day in Prague. So I was keep asking myself, even with my help, where did such a poor handwriting throughout society come from? And with the right angle, I had to search for an answer in my PhD studies, which was the next logical step after my master. So my PhD thesis has two interconnected parts, a dissertation and a new script typeface intended for cultivating handwriting. By cultivation, I mean the effort <coughs> to visually elevate and advance handwriting, improve its readability, flow, and its speed. But let's again ask a basic question first. Why is it important to know how to write nowadays? So that the visual environment around us doesn't look like this, for example. The visual and quality level of the handwriting that surrounds us every day and everywhere is awful, not to mention downright repulsive. And I'm not just talking about aesthetics and composition. The content is often full of grammatical errors. Beautiful handwriting is just a necessity. Written expression must be cultivated, otherwise it will be completely stunted. So the only <coughs> present truth is that handwritten signs can be done with taste and in moderation. In my practice, I focus on the cultivation of handwritten signs, and I don't just mean sign painting for businesses. I also came up with handwritten scripts for specific companies, bistros and restaurants, which the staff and other people learn. And I hold my own workshops and sign painting classes where I teach how to work and develop a script type faces. So to answer the original question, why is it important to know how to write nowadays? I can answer, we need to write so that we are able to read and communicate. Writing defines our literacy. Thanks to writing, we develop our memory and deepen our knowledge, master fine motor skills, and perhaps we can also create better and more complex typefaces, not only the script ones. Many people say that handwriting is disappearing and that it will be a useless skill in a few years. But technology expands the possibility of handwriting. In the words of the New York Times critic notebook writer Cody Delistrati, writing will probably never disappear even if new technologies change the definition of, of what it means to write. Which is a good point. Using the Scribble software developed by Apple, you can write directly into a browser or use your handwriting on the iPad or iWatch display. Deep neural networks are learning how to recognize letters regardless of your writing skills. American handwriting is flawlessly adaptable because their school alphabet models are unconnected. Even Czech cursive doesn't create problems anymore, same as connected Arabic or Asian scripts. Technology meets our handwriting needs. But as you yourself have seen, the current situation is catastrophic. There are very few people who are satisfied with their own handwriting, and I am not speaking only about Czech people. Above all, children, but mainly adults, need and want advice on how to improve their handwriting. What type theoretician John Dreyfus wrote 45 years ago for Visual Language Magazine? Today, we tend to use a keyboard more often than a pen or pencil. And, moreover, there is virtually no char characteristic handwriting or inscription of our own period from which type designers can take their inspirations. And this seems still up to date. School handwriting cursive models came to my mind, which have a decisive influence on the dissemination of writing knowledge, as well as the forming of written script and which should define basic aesthetic barriers and instill basic writing skills. But today, Czech first graders write using letter forms that are more than nine decades old and not been updated since then, archaic, complicated and in many regards absolutely terribly designed. How do we get into this situation then? And above all, how do we get out of this situation? In my PhD dissertation, I deal with the reassessment of the historical development of handwritten letters and the search for a period when handwriting could be found in its most comfortable position. Therefore, before we analyze the current problematic handwriting, 
cursive model, let's recall what it evolved from. Uh, warning, it's going to be boring. So Roman capital forms stand at the height of development. They stabilize the shapes of the minuscules, the uppercase into the form we use today. But my attention was drawn to the evolving of early Roman cursives, simplified to the minimum number of strokes necessary. Early cursives look like an atomized version of monumental letter forms and could be written very quickly. The characters gradually inclined and joined. Roman cursives were already created in a four-line minuscule system. Almost all of today's lowercase letters have similar shapes. In creating our contemporary cursive, it could easily start from the scribes of the documents of Ravenna. In the 9th century, the evolution of letter shapes culminated in the creation <coughs> of the Carolingian minuscule. Its readability was enhanced by writing letters separately. It probably came to our country in the 10th century and became the starting point for Gothic letter forms. In the case of handwritten Gothic cursive, arcs were not broken. It was faster to bend into loops, into triangles. The chisel of the Gothic book, minuscule, created a texture, which was a slowly drawn letter form. The key lies in its technique. Letters were drawn, not written, and that too slow. The bastarda was developed <coughs> at the start of the 14th century for rewriting literature into national languages. It achieved optimum readability by the isolated writing of individual letters with a wide letter form proportions. It spread quickly in France and also in our country, gaining popularity and national character during our most historically significant period. The further development of Czech lettering and letterpress stalled on Gothic letterforms. Abroad, the Renaissance lettera cancellarisca became a replacement for Gothic letterforms. Lettera cancellarisca, an exceptionally cultivated humanistic cursi, was so perfect, smooth, and well-balanced that it can be used to this day. Cancellaresca and handwritten Latin script continued to develop in the period of Baroque and Classicism <coughs> and the so-called Italian hand or Italian cursi, written with a pointed steel pen. It then moved to English soil at the end of the 18th century, where it was domesticated as the so-called English hand or English Latin which was literally the opposite of nature shapes, but was an expression of elegance and craft perfection. From there, this slanted cursive with hairline strokes spread as a universal European Latin cursive. Its drawing significantly influenced both the Russian Cyrillic and the German Courant, which were the basic italics of the Austro-Hungarian school reform of 1774. The current greatly influenced the shape of letters, and although it looks sharp, it could be written very quickly. It, it, if it wasn't so far removed from our current writing habit, it could be taken as a legal starting point from my own shape research. In our country, the slow tra transition from Gothic type to Latin letter forms continued into the second half of the 19th century. The classicist cursive won, thanks to the efforts by the Czech revivalists in their fight for the national character and national language. After an extensive reform in Czechoslovakia in 1932, a new original school handwriting cursive with a looser morphology was created. Nevertheless, the artistic starting point of these letter forms still lies in the precise English handwritten Latin script. Even the typographer František Muzika told of the English handwritten Latin script as the soulless terrorizer of school children. However, the school handwritten script arrived as its current appearance through a series of changes. The biggest of these was made in the 1970s by Václav Pence, whose changes to the typeface were too forced and too metallic. Jan Solpera, a professor Jan Sopra wrote on Penn's changes that the result of introducing them would be handwriting that is even less legible than is now com commonplace. 
but Pence called Sokolov's review a false prophecy. And because his model suited the authorities of the time, and let's be honest, it was a communistic party regime, it has remained nearly unchanged in handwriting manuals to this day. Its terrible potential has become fully realized with the rise of digitization. Our current Czech school handwriting models are terribly outdated and are awful in every way. This so-called cursive must be stopped as soon as possible. It can no longer be used. One of the first artists who tried to suggest a possible solution in Czech Republic was Tatiana Svatošová Ciparova in 1990s, but her model of a linear cursive was unfortunately never completed. The second attempt was made between 2002 and 2005 by Radana Lencova with the new writing Latin script project, later named Comenia script. These were intended to completely replace the Pence model, but unfortunately they failed. Comenia script aroused extensive controversy, not only due to its licensing, teaching methodology and the typeface simplicity, but mainly over its lack of connections between characters, which was more of a pedagogical problem because Kamenia script was originally designed for children to figure out for themselves how to continue from the exit stroke to the next letter. But if the teacher does not explicitly show them to do this, they will not be able to guess the connection stroke or will not use it at all. Unfortunately, in the Czech Republic, there are no rules for individual methodology. For that so, Comenia is only used in some schools and the discretion of principals and teachers. The others still use the Pence model from 70s. The media coverage of Comenia script and the confused, unclear situation unfortunately enabled the market to open to other hybrid typefaces, which should be a crime and which harm school children even more than the Pence model. How is it possible that we live in a state where multiple cursive handouts and manuals with differing approaches can exist? The situation where primers and handwriting manual books look terrible and have no official model exist was caused by such things as never implemented digitization of the school handwriting model, which could have been developed by a special team made up of representatives of teachers, methodologists, psychologists and doctors, neuroscientists, linguists, paleographers, graphologists, typographers, and a large number of tested children. But this utopian work counts on the idea that these experts will come to an agreement and also count on competent, competent politicians and stable budget, confidence in education and a long-term vision. I am of the opinion that such an essential school handwriting model should not be designed by one person, but by a mutually respectful team of specialists using all available technologies. It is not possible within the scope of a PhD thesis to complete such a model, but it is possible to at least create an intermediate step, which would prepare part of the selected topic open the way to interdisciplinary discussion and provide suggestions for follow-up activities and efforts. And this was the content of my PhD. For all the aforementioned reasons, it is clear that a new harmonization model must be created. Such a typeface should be able to improve everyone's handwriting, whether they are beginners or experts, whether they are artisans or architects, students in art or in secondary schools, or just those who are simply unsure of the appearance of their handwriting. There are two ways how to approach such tasks. First is a sensitive typographic redesign of the existing school model, but this does not comprehensively solve the overall problem of the letter shapes, nor their readability, writing efficiency, and much more. Do you want proof? My final typeface was preceded by this experiment which resulted in girlish, ugly little forms, which I find completely abhorrent. Sorry. The second method is more challenging. The new writing structure must be drawn completely from scratch. Adana and Tatiana found an artistic starting point in Lettera Cancellaresca, in Italian script cursive. However, my search showed that Czechs can stay faithful to the local-born Bastarda script 
that could be an adequate starting point both locally and formally. Unlike Cancellaresca, the Bastarda letter font had a stable appearance in our country for more than <coughs> 300 years and which has been domesticated. But why was it so important to use the Bastarda artistically? It contains the key features and taking it over enables the improvement of the current drawing and the structure, specifically. In contrast to an extensive mechanical narrowing, it has expanded proportions, almost to the square of shape. In contrast to an unnatural tilt, it has a straight tilt which can especially be written better by left-handers and that could be easily slanted off to both sides. In contrast to an over mechanical connection, it allows to grow way more individual connecting strokes that speeds up the writing. It also has a higher x height and shorter ascenders and descenders, increasing readability and the compactness of its shapes and lines and rows. It also has a clear and open drawing, which is related to print and contemporary typefaces. And finally, instead of a dark, complicated junctions, it has a very light inner areas and a dark ductus, evoking a feeling of sturdiness. So it would be easy to adapt the Bastarda as a majuscule and minuscule script and a typeface. However, flow is not a problem for the Bastarda either, because most of its characters are written in one, at most two strokes, without lifting for one following stroke. When stretching the in-stroke and out-stroke, the illusion of a connected typeface can be achieved. But this is really only an illusion in which the characters connect visually, but interruptions remain between them. The limit of the bus standard is a three-letter ligature. It is more readable when writing individualized shapes. So when going through the second way, I had to give up on another digital modification of the Bastarda into a written cursive. First, the typeface needed to be significantly modified, and it isn't good to create new letter shapes when evolving a contemporary handwritten script for everyday use, simply because there is no time to learn them on an everyday basis. Secondly, my new typeface does not have to be fixed to Bastarda shapes as a starting point. It's enough that it manages to suggest an ideal solution to all the problems we face with our current writing model. So I continued and on the third time, I created a completely new script typeface based on all the facts I've learned. It's basically skeletal, directly stems from my own handwriting and entire writing experience, combining all the accessible writing instruments and skills gained in my calligraphy, lettering and sign painting practice. The resulting solution and artistic output of my PhD is a new script typeface intended to cultivate handwriting. It's a skeleton of a linear cursive with <coughs> mostly connected characters. Its proportions and morphology are based directly on the Bastarda letter form, but in contrast, it contains connections and a tilt. When creating this handwritten script and a digital typeface at once, I took into account the researchers associated with handwriting. I primarily placed emphasis on the clearest possible basic shape because the brain remembers letters as a rhythmic sequence of points and directions. For vast writing, I use an uninterrupted construction instead of raising a hand to apply a new stroke. The model should rather encourage variations and adaptations to the writer's personal needs. Lowercase letters are connected without loops, which can arise on their own as the speed of writing. However, Czech language contains a lot of long words and diacritics, so a few characters connected from the right do have a pause and release in the connection for a natural handwritten flow of letters. Because a number of people write only in uppercase, I included unconnected capital letters as a basic set which can be written faster with a minimum number of strokes and with greater freedom. All sharp angles are replaced with carved, naturally guided strokes. The script also contains uppercase with connections to lowercase, such as initials. 
It has tails and loops and swashes for enhancing the writing speed. Wide proportions bring life to the typeface. As you see, ascenders and descenders are shortened and tails are optional. The character of the script can be changed mainly by varying pen strokes and its thickness and imprint, but also by the length of correction stroke or by adding loops in ascenders and descenders for speedy writing. <coughs> it allows for the use of different writing tools and accommodates different writing techniques. Could be easily remade as a school writing model or simply as a font for occasional use. It is a typeface intended for workshops, for individual lettering, for my own sand painting and calligraphic practice, and for you. The resulting typeface is now finished. It can be tested, mastered, complemented, and modified. Applying it into real school life system might be just the side effect. Just come get your copy of the specimen after the talk, I've got some. And uh, this was in a brief a presentation of my schoolwork, which I would like now to discuss with you and develop, or maybe, I don't know what. So, and in 1985, John Dreyfus wrote that the only certainty is that nothing will ever deter from writing, and for that reason, I'll do my best, best to improve our everyday and writing. So thank you for your attention. children and I tested it on my workshops but uh, because we have Benda and other projects I never had time to fully jump into pressuring any other ways how to achieve to full apply in the system and I know how Radana struggled for 10 years with the government and everywhere everyone how the teachers were very rude when she released the typeface and I just want to do rather next type faces instead of fighting for a decade with uh, government and educational sphere. So okay. I'm doing my own uh, site uh, testing and developing, but uh, I finished this a year and a half ago and since then I've got so many other work to do that it's just sleeping beauty. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you have any questions from the audience? Structured as the um, uppercase alphabet with open loops with lots of like oval shapes. The number one isn't just sharp; it has some swashes inside. And uh, basically, only typographers can use all style letters, all style numerals. So it's normal uppercase uh, numbers. And I don't know. I haven't tested it on like first graders and preschool children. I'm always testing on uh, friends, children, and uh, secondary school students, 
and they already know how the glyph looks like. So it's easier than before you are testing it on completely new bits. Thank you for the question. I said everything. You said a lot. I can speak more longer. I was interested to know, uh, I suppose you were born after uh, communist regime? Yes, yeah. luckily. But and so the fact that uh, a lot of this work, for example, uh, Benda, for example, and other things you did, was <coughs> hidden but preserved in a way, did that um, have an influence? <laughs> Um, did that have any influence on you? Uh, is it is it more interesting to be able to discover something that was hidden like that for a while and maybe in some sense preserved because of that? Uh, it's absolutely appropriate question because now we are facing this question two times with Benda and with Menhart. We are working on right now. Uh, with in Benda's case. Uh, Benda was forgotten for so long, not because of the regime and not because of he was too old, but because the generation that lived doesn't uh, take his work as a cool enough to be contemporary. And it needed to lie down up under the layer of dust for so many years to be discovered by someone who can watch it with different perspectives and do not judge it as like uncool stuff or too prehistoric. And with Menhart, the problem is very similar. He's too connected with the communistic regime and the diplomas for the president and for the government. And without my experiences with communist party and everything I just heard from, hear from my parents and my grandparents, I can have the privilege of looking with completely fresh, sharp eyes only on the letter forms and letter shapes without any... Uh, exactly. Yeah. And any political ideology in behind, and I can judge it. But it's similar story like with Eric Gill. You know, it's a problematic, controversial topic. And I am strictly a typographer focusing on shapes. I'm not someone who will be discussing the political and ideological stuff on background. I leave that to theoretics. I'm much more into the craft and how the cards are good or not. And that's why we discovered Benda and put it on light because I think the generation that will come can judge the work themselves. We does not need to be the curators. We does not need to say if we like it or not. We just need to do the work for the future and to learn from the past. Cool. Yeah, I hope um, <laughs> I'm also interested because there are people here from a lot of different countries and every year has its own sort of uh, Absolutely. script. I know I learned to write in the United States, it was very different, but even the tool was different because I, was, uh, I learned to write with a very large pencil, and I don't think in Europe they did that, it was mostly, you know, penmanship, etc. I so, remember trying to that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm wondering if people recognize the script as something close to what they did, or something very different from what they learned? Well, I think that the, the handwriting situation in the United States is a lot like the, the cursive school books that you showed from the Czech Republic. That, that looks most like what I learned to write in, in grade school. Uh, and I've struggled with that ever since. Yeah, there's been some reforms in Austria and France a few years back, last uh, decade, and it was a good changes. But in our country, it, we are somehow stuck in the uh, past times, and, and it's not up to me to change it because the entire educational system must be completely switched on and reversed. And it's much bigger problem than just a new type of place that could be teach at schools. It's about the methodology and about the teachers that are too old to learn new stuff and about uh, putting things in online sphere after the COVID and so many other things yeah. are connected and this is just the top of the iceberg. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I think it's like a downhill battle. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like bottom of the iceberg. 
I, I've actually been hearing about this subject for many, many years in conferences, and et cetera, and it keeps coming back, but it doesn't seem to be going anywhere in, uh, in real life. No. Probably not. But anyway, it's, it's good to, to try. Yeah, it's good to try because you learn on it something yeah. that you can actually use yourself in a professional practice. So this was really lots of academical stuff that has no commercial use or has any benefits for nobody else than the academic <coughs> sphere. So check, check, check. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Yes, my uh, my wife is a school teacher, mm -hmm. and one of the rules that she teaches is do not write in all capitals. But I write in all capitals all the time. So I appreciate that you and your sign here have taken into account for those of us who like to break the rules. Um, and, uh, and I'm curious in the sense of is that very common? You said a lot of people do write in all capitals. Is that something that you? So I know so many people writing only in capitals and the problem is that they needed to develop the shapes themselves based on the calligraphic uppercase. So my father writes M like four strokes down and then do the loop and every time I'm reading a note by him I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 no, totally not. But the problem is exactly in the teaching methodology. And when you have kids and the kid is struggling with writing some glyph, for instance, that and it's still having reverse glaze or problems. The teacher must come and say, hey, I will help you to try to write a different way. You can do this and you can do that and show it from different angle, incline it a little bit and spend a minute or two with the children and not just be, you need to write with disease and bring it tomorrow and it needs to be perfect. So that's not a way how to learn and that's not a way how to be individual and check school system is opposite of individual, it's more like strict. Yeah, but there is lots of individual different ways of write. For instance, my brother write with reverse italic, with inclined on the left, and it's almost like lying on the line. And if you watch the handwriting in my family, we are not related in any <laughs> But I also write like a pig if I write uh, notes for myself. So it's just a uh, pose. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, anybody else? Question? <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, I thank you. Thank you.